Hello and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Reem and I'm a PGY2 pharmacy resident here in the United States. Today, I wanted to make this video to talk about how to obtain a postgraduate pharmacy residency program here in the United States. So essentially, this video is for foreign pharmacy graduates who are looking to complete a PGY1 or a PGY2 in a hospital or a community setting. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is what is a PGY1 or a PGY2 a program. So it stands for Postgraduate Pharmacy Residency Program, and this is a 12-month intense train, intensive training program that typically takes a place within a hospital or a community pharmacy. It also can take place within an outpatient or uh, an ambulatory care center. So throughout this 12-month period, you'll be, uh, you'll be exposed to different uh, pharmacy specialties or um, certain disciplines such as pediatrics, um, internal medicine, uh, uh, critical care, and also ambulatory care. And you'll also be assigned different projects and a, a major research project that you'll have to complete throughout the year. There are presentations that you need to complete, topic discussions, drug information questions, and other things. The benefit of completing a PGY1 residency or a PGY2 is that it will provide you with uh, a competitive advantage when applying to a hospital pharmacy position or a community pharmacy position. Um, so the difference between a PGY1 and a PGY2 is typically a PGY1 is a general uh, non-specialized uh, non training and a PGY2 is typically uh, completed in a, an area of specialty such as critical care, oncology, pediatrics, and AM care. Uh, a PGY1 is equivalent um, to a three-year work experience. So that's why it is important, um, uh, in my opinion, it is important to complete a PGY1. What are the admission requirements to complete a PGY1 program or a PGY2? As the number one is thing that you need to look into is the degree requirement. So some programs require you to complete a doctor of pharmacy degree or a PharmD degree and some programs don't. So it is important uh, to essentially look at each individual program and see what the requirements are. Also keep in mind that some programs require you to complete uh, a PharmD degree or a pharmacy uh, degree from an ACP accredited program. Essentially it is uh, an accrediting body that typically accredits uh, pharmacy schools here within the uh, United States. So if you meet the first requirement, the second thing that you need to uh, look into essentially, which are um, your training background. So it is important when applying for a pharmacy residency program is that you need to have some sort of a hospital um, experience or a community pharmacy experience. So a lot of the institutional based or hospital uh, PGY1 programs really uh, put or put some emphasis into the rotations that you took as a, as a pharmacy student. And for a foreign pharmacist, essentially it is the completion of the 1500 hours um, in a hospital setting. So that's another thing that you um, they look into. Um, so where can you find more information about the pharmacy residency programs? So ASHP or the American Society of Hospital Pharmacists have um, a directory on their website that lists all the accredited or pre-accredited pharmacy residency programs in the United States and internationally. So for you to search the programs that you want to apply for, um, you'll need to go through the directory and look at the programs that you want to apply either within the states that you're living in or um, outside of the state that you're living in because it is organized by state. The um, ASHP mid-year. So this is an annual, um, an annual meeting that takes place um, here in the United States and they typically have uh, something called residency showcase. So it is a um, uh, a huge um, showcase that includes booths and each program typically has its own booth. And what they do is that they have their preceptors, the program director, and also the um, their current uh, residents. Uh, they show up at, to this showcase and then they, um, they typically provide some information or um, 
uh, you can have more dialogue with the current residents and see what they're looking for in a candidate. So this is a great venue for you as a potential candidate to uh, attend this meeting. Um, the last year or this year, the, the meeting was actually virtual. So perhaps I'm not sure how it's going to be um, this, um, this year, 2021, if it's going to be virtual or in person. And I will uh, provide the link to the meeting um, in the description below. So feel free to check that out. And finally, what I wanted to say is that the most important thing that you need to do to be considered for uh, a postgraduate residency, which meeting the licensure requirement, obviously. Um, so all the residency programs require you to be licensed um, for three quarters of the year. So essentially, by the time you start residency, you should be able um, to complete any um, examination that you have left, such as the NAPLEX or MP MPJE, uh, before you become a pharmacist uh, licensed in that state. So that's why it is important for you to start early and try to complete um, the, <clears throat> the 1500 hours by the time the residency program starts, which typically they start in June or July. So this wraps up my video for today. Thank you for listening and please feel free to subscribe and comment below uh, if you have any questions or suggestions. Thank you and have a good day.